Now that we have most of the HTML and PHP that we're going to need, it's time to make our WordPress theme look a little bit better with some CSS. We're going to go through the CSS pretty fast because while it is good to see how another person styles their theme, this video is going to vary pretty dramatically depending on your particular situation or style. That said, I'll try to focus on the parts that are more WordPress specific. In order to facilitate this, I'm going to cheat a little bit and paste in all the CSS from our previous site. So here's the CSS from our previous site. And if you haven't downloaded the basic HTML and CSS, you can grab it from the first video in this chapter, or you can just go ahead and grab it from the code from this video. So I'm just gonna go right below our first comment here and paste all of that in. Now, when we switch over to the browser and refresh the page, as you can see, this is only going to get us so far. And in fact, we'll have to come back to our CSS eventually, even beyond this video, because we don't have a sidebar and we're missing a few other elements as well. So we'll need to build that out a little bit later when we have content for it. However, rather than leave the CSS for last, let's go ahead and try to style what we have because a lot of the time, the work you do on your design in CSS can actually inform your HTML structure. Before we start cutting down and editing our CSS, I'm going to add in a few more styles. There are many things in WordPress that you just have to style all the time. And fortunately, a lot of people have already done this work for us. Ian Stewart is an employee of Automatic, which is the company that makes WordPress. On his blog, Theme Shaper, he has released a file called wp.css, and this will be included with the code for this video. So if you want to get it that way, you can do that too. This file includes styling for embedded images in your post that might be aligned left, right, or center. And it also includes styling for block quotes and several other common WordPress items. So we need to import this into our theme. I've placed this wp.css file in our root directory. And to import it, we're gonna go up to the top of our file and just after our first comment with all of the meta information, we're gonna say at import and the URL is going to be the name of the file, wp.css. And with that, let's go ahead and switch back over to the browser and refresh the page. And you can already see that things are starting to look a little bit better, but let's figure out what we need to address before we can move forward. So first, I noticed that there's a missing background image. We need to add in the gradient that we had originally. The navigation seems to be a little bit off. The font sizes for post titles are off as well. And it looks like we have a CSS error with the height of the posts and they're not really accommodating our images very well. So lastly, we could remove the sidebar at this stage, but we're only going to add it back in later. So it's going to look slightly broken for the time being, but we'll fill it out in upcoming videos. So first, let's fix our background image. So I'm going to switch back to our text editor. And in your theme directory, you should create a folder for your images. I've called my folder images, and I've already grabbed the image from the project included in the first video in this chapter. If you don't have that code, don't worry about it. The image is included with the code for this video. So now we just need to change our path. So I'm gonna change it to the images folder, and the name of the file is the same, background.ping. So when we save that and go back and refresh, you can see that already it's starting to look even better with the background image in there. Now let's try and fix our navigation. The only real problem here is that instead of having an ID called nav set to an unordered list, we have a div with the class menu that wraps an unordered list. So in our CSS, we need to change the selectors. So I'm gonna switch back to our text editor here and where we have the nav ID, I'm gonna change it to the class menu and then we'll select the unordered list and then same thing for this selector here. So when we switch back and refresh, you can see that our navigation is now fixed. 
Next, we need to fix the font size on our blog post titles. So I'll switch back here and we need to find the content. There it is right there. And before we move on, I'm actually going to change this H3 here to say entry title because it's better to use the classes that we created. And then just below that, I'm going to have a similar selector. It'll be the content ID, the class post, the entry title, and then finally the anchor tag. And we'll set it to a font size of 1.2 M's. And when we switch back and refresh, there we are. We can see that our post titles are a little bit larger now. Now, this font is slightly larger than what we're using in our original design. And of course, these titles are also now links. However, making them bigger will help to differentiate them from the text that we've added below. So finally, we need to fix this issue with our images. This is actually a pretty quick fix. So I'm going to switch back to our text editor. And again, in the content area, I'm just going to float all of our posts to the left. So when I switch back and refresh the page, there we go. Because these images are floated to the right, floating these posts to the left will allow them to expand to fit the content. That should be most of the styling that you need to really get this theme going. In the next video, we'll be focusing on individual blog posts.